Welcome to our review on sustainability. So when we're talking about sustainable development, what we're actually referring to is using resources for human needs without harming the environment. So what we can actually do to achieve this then is by using a range of sustainable management techniques, things like sustainable fishing and sustainable forestry. So the different strategies might include educating people about it, it might include imposing quotas so that people can only catch so many fish, etc., per week, per month, and it may involve replanting. So I'm sure you've seen those adverts where for every tree they cut down, they plant three more in its place. That's what we mean by our sustainable forestry and replanting. When we're thinking about these strategies, then we need to have them planned, not only at our immediate local level, but also at the national and international level to be truly effective. So what we find is that the whole idea behind these different strategies is to protect the population size of many species and to prevent them from either becoming endangered or extinct. If we consider extinction then, what we find is that us as humans have been responsible for the extinction of a disturbing number of species. And the reason that they've become extinct is because when we've built our buildings, we've destroyed their habitats. When we've decided we need food or even for pleasure, we've gone hunting and we've overhunted them to the point of extinction. We've polluted their environment so they can no longer survive there. We may have even outcompeted those animals for resources like food. And we've also been key instigators in climate change. So at the bottom there, we've got four different species that no longer exist. They are extinct. So we've got the river dolphin on the left there, which is perhaps the most recent extinction. So that one hasn't actually been seen since 2002. You've got the thylacine, which is that delightfully large mouth wolf like thing. You've got the dodo bird it was only ever present on the island of Mauritius. And as humans, when we first went there, we decided that they were nice big birds that were pretty sort of tame because they would not encountered humans. So we killed and ate them. And then we've got the quagga on the right as well. So those are just four of the many species that are now extinct as a result of our human behaviour. It's not just the fact that several animals are now extinct that we should worry about. We've also got another huge number that are at risk of becoming extinct. They're known as endangered species. So these are the ones that will become extinct if their numbers fall below a critical level if there's not enough genetic variation within the population left, or if those populations are restricted to small areas, because then a very small change, if they're only in one little area, can have devastating effects. So some of those creatures, as you can see, are some of the most amazing animals that you may have encountered in zoos and so forth, that are actually at risk of no longer being there in our world, full stop. So you've obviously got the Western Lowland Gorilla up there, the giant panda, which if you're in my lessons, you know, I think they're probably too stupid to live, but also endangered. You've got a leatherback turtle. You've got our tigers, very limited numbers of them left and the Amur leopard as well. So these are creatures that you're looking at now that you've got a chance to see that people in the future may not be able to see anything but the pictures we're looking at now. We can take several steps to try to conserve these endangered species. So we could protect their habitats. So as opposed to just letting them get destroyed, we can make sure that they remain for the future. We can bring in legal protection to obviously prevent them being hunted and traded. We can educate people just to make them aware of this problem. In zoos, as much as everyone thinks zoos are wonderful places just to go and look at the animals, they also run very important captive breeding programs in order to increase those populations. And some of our best zoos then release those populations back into the wild as well. Howlets and Port Lim do this frequently. We've got seed banks which will store seeds from rare plants so that obviously they're not lost. And we can also create artificial ecosystems to replace any that have been destroyed. If we consider the tigers then, which we've already mentioned are an endangered species now, the reason they're endangered is because currently we've got less than 3,200 tigers left anywhere in the world today. Now, back in 2010, the WWF actually launched a campaign to try to double tiger populations by 2022. And the way that they were planning to do this is by monitoring the growth of the tiger population. They were going to monitor the populations of their prey species. So obviously they could identify if there was an issue with their food supply. 
and they also plan to create protected habitats because that would mean that people wouldn't then be endangering the tigers by damaging their habitats and therefore taking away their place that they live.